let's talk about finding the area between two curves um, with y as the independent variable. So let me draw a set of axes over here. So this would be the y-axis, and this will be the x-axis over here. And I'm going to label two points. I'm going to label a point C on the y-axis and a point D on the y-axis like this. And let me just draw some dotted lines. This is the line y is equal to D. And if I go like this, this is the line y is equal to C. Okay. And then I have one curve. This curve looks like this. And this is the curve. Um, u of y. So u of y is actually equal to an x value. So this time our independent variable is going to be y and our dependent variable is going to be x. Um, for the second curve, if I draw it over here in green, this is the curve x is equal to v of y. All right. And let me shade the area that we're trying to calculate. We're trying to calculate this, this area right here. All right, cool. So let's take a look at this theorem. This theorem says, let u of y and v of y be continuous functions so that u of y is bigger than or equal to v of y. Now, for us, being bigger means further to the right. Remember, the x values on the right are larger than the x values on the left. So we got u of y is on the right. We got v of y is on the left over here like this, okay? Um, and that's described right here. So it also says um, it's bounded above and below by the lines y is equal to d above and y is equal to c below, all right? Then we have a formula to calculate the area, and our formula is the area is going to be the integral. We're, this time we're going to go from C to D, and we're, our variable of integration is going to be Y, so I put a DY at the end there. And then you just want to subtract the bigger function, which is U of Y, minus the smaller function, which is V of Y. All right, so just to emphasize that, you say this one's the bigger one, and this V of Y is the smaller one. So why don't we look at an example of this in action? In example five, it says that R be the region bounded between the graphs of the function f of x equal to x squared, g of x equal to two minus x, and y equal to zero. So let's try to graph the situation here. So let's put a y-axis over here, and this will be an x-axis over here. Okay, and let's label this. So let's go one, two over here like this. We'll have one, two over here like this. Uh, we will graph the parabola in blue. So that's equal to x squared. So maybe this curve looks something like this. It comes up comes up like this and comes up like this. This is just a sketch, okay? This is not the uh, greatest graph in the world here. And then, so this was uh, y is equal to x squared. I mean, it looks like I mislabeled the point one, one, but you get the idea, hopefully. And then um, we are going to look at this, line now, the line I'll graph as a uh, two minus X, I'll graph that in green. So this guy looks like this, kind of comes down like this, and it comes like this, like that. I also need to graph the third part, the third boundary, which is Y is equal to zero. So that line is gonna be just the X axis, so this looks like this, 
This is y is equal to zero. And the region that I want to find the area if is bounded by all three of those. So some of you might think that this is the region that we're talking about, but this region doesn't incorporate the line y equal to zero. So there's only one region that incorporates all three of those lines, and that's this, this region right here. So to make it clear that we're, um, you know, we're working with this region, let me shade it in. I guess this is yellowish, tan. All right. So this is the area that we're trying to find. Now, my first comment that I want to make is that if we were doing it as a top bottom, then um, we'd have to split this into two pieces because the top function and the top function changes at really one right here. Like I said, my graph is kind of off. Uh, so, but we're not going to do it as a top bottom. We're actually going to do it as a left right situation. So, so I think the first thing we should do is we should really rewrite these functions in terms of uh, a left right type situation. So let's rewrite functions uh, with y as the independent variable. Okay, and the reason I want to do that again is I want to think of this as a left right integral rather than a top bottom integral. So if I have y is equal to x squared, when I take the square root of both sides, that's going to give me x is equal to plus or minus the square root of y. Uh, now, I hope you can see that we have two sides of this curve here. This is going to be the positive square root of y, and this is going to be the negative square root of y. I just want to keep the positive part because this region only incorporates the positive part. So really, we actually have just x is equal to this positive square root of y. For the second curve, I have y is equal to 2 minus x. So that's going to give me that um, x is equal to 2 minus y when I um, solve for x in terms of y. Now that I've found uh, or I've rewritten the function so that they're in terms of y, the next thing I want to do is I want to find the intersection point. So how do I find the intersection point? I set the two curves equal to each other. So I have the square root of y is equal to 2 minus y. All right. And what I can do now is I can square both sides. So if I square both sides, I get y, which is squaring the left-hand side, is equal to uh, 4 minus 4y plus y squared. Next, I am going to move the y on the left to the right-hand side. So that's going to give me 0 is equal to 4 minus 5y plus y squared. Let me rewrite that as 0 is equal to y squared minus 5y plus 4. I am going to factor that. When I factor that, I'm going to get 0 is equal to y minus 4 times y minus 1, which means I have two y values where they cross, y equal to 4 and y equal to 1. So when we look at our picture, we can see, oh yeah, this graph crosses at y equal to 1, and this graph crosses at y equal to 4 over here. So which one do I want to use? I want to keep the y equal to 1 one. So I don't really need the y equal to 4 one, but the y equal to 1 is what I'm going to keep. All right. Great. So now this is a left versus right situation. So I could just set up my integral and then evaluate. So now we are going to solve this as a right 
minus left type integral that is in terms of y. So when I want to find this area, the area is going to be equal to the integral. The y values are ranging from 0 to 1. Remember, that's how we, we got the uh, intersection point, was by setting the two curves equal to each other. So we're going to go from 0 to 1. My right function is the green one, which is 2 minus y. And my left function is the uh, blue one, which is minus the square root of y. So we want to subtract the right function from the left function. And we're doing everything in terms of y. So I put a dy at the end there. OK. I find the antiderivative. The antiderivative is going to be 2y minus y squared over 2 minus y to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 1. And when I substitute everything in, I'm going to get 2 minus 1 half minus 2 thirds minus 0. And this simplifies to 5 over 6, I guess, units squared. Let's highlight that. And that's going to be our answer. All right, everyone. Take care.